Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I am your host, Jason Turner. I am an independent contractor and trainer. In this episode of C++ Weekly, I am going to discuss StringView. Now this is being talked about as the new language by which we should look at strings. And I'll explain what that means with some examples as we get into this one. So we've got our, again, cppreference.com here with our string view in it. And we can see that they have made type defs for us from basic string view to string view, w string view, u16 string view, and u32 string view, which are the built-in string types since C++11. So string view is literally a view into a string. And it's got several different constructors. So we can construct from a const car star, so a null terminated const car, and we can construct from a const car star plus a length, and construct from a basic string uh, view other, so that's not really surprising, and a default constructor that is a view into nothing, a string of size zero. The immediate question is why does something like this exist? and I will demonstrate. We are, of course, using the Compiler Explorer. So let's just say, for some reason, you need to work on a string. You don't know where it's coming from, and you just want to, say, get the length back. That's a pretty weak uh, example, but let's just start there. So in this very basic example, we are, let's change this back to Intel syntax here. We are passing in our hello world string and we are getting back the value 11 because we are getting the length from it. Now this happens to fall into small string op optimization. So we want to make it a slightly longer string push it outside of the small string optimization world so that we know that GCC has to do a dynamic allocation, which is something that GCC does not have the ability to optimize away, unlike Clang. And we're using GCC for these examples to prove a point a bit here. So we should be able to get back from our main whatever the length of the string is presumably, although it's going to be a fair bit of compiled code. So we can see here that we are constructing our string, and the interesting point is that GCC knows the answer. GCC knows that the answer is 24, and it is returning that into the EAX register, which is the value that is returned from main. However, since GCC does not have heap elision optimizations in it yet, it is still doing this new and delete of the internal buffer for the string. But let's not say that this is a failing of GCC, because why did we even need to construct a string in this place? In this example, in our call to length, we are telling the compiler we must have a const standard string reference. And the compiler says, very fine, I am going to automatically create a standard string for you on the stack using the implicit conversion that is provided via the const car star constructor to standard string. So we have here a standard string that has been created on the stack for us and all we want back is the size. So instead of creating a standard string here, we can create a C++ 17 string view. And in this case, we still have our dot size operator, and we are getting 24 returned back to us because the compiler, I mean, it's, it's created from this const car star, that we are passing it, and it's constructing this string view object. And the string view object doesn't do any allocation at all. It doesn't hold anything other than a pointer to the beginning of the string and a pointer to the end of the string. And the compiler is very easily able to constant fold that away and give us back the length of the string. So this is the whole point of string view. Sometimes you simply don't need a string, you just need to look at a string. And depending on what you're doing, this can result in very efficient 
code much more efficient than if you're creating hundreds of strings on the stack and potentially having to do heap operations to actually allocate the data for that string. So taking a quick look back at our string view, we see that it has begin and end iterators as we would expect, but note that it is returning a const iterator whether or not it is cbegin that you're calling. This is always const. And it has rbegin and rend so you can go over the string in reverse. And you've got other things that you would expect such as the dot data, the operator, uh, index operator, and size, length, max size, empty, these things, you know, it, it's designed to look like a string in many ways. It's even got substring, find, so it looks like a string, smells like a string, but it's a view into a string. And we can see that we've also got remove prefix and remove suffix, so we can shrink, shrink the iterators from either end. And it has normal um, copy and compare kinds of things. And generally speaking, it is const expr, which is very important to note. We want const expr. So continuing with our example here, we could, if we were so inclined, should be able to do this. And this should compile to, well, nothing. We're simply returning zero from main. There we go, we're returning zero from main. But we've got this interesting const expr thing, and now we know that this thing is a const expr in the string view. So we could do, for example, and now our found at, ah, I see. We have hit a limitation in that our find function is not properly implemented as const expr in the version of GCC that we are using. But we can see that this is making interesting strides and that we should really use string view as our language for talking about strings and try to const expr really as much as we can. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.